Hello. I'd like to thank the American College of Surgeons for pr the privilege of presenting at this year's Virtual Clinical Congress. I'd also like to thank my moderators for this session, Dr. Salim and Dr. Thomas, for inviting me to speak with you today about ischemic colitis. I have nothing to disclose. Our objectives today are to cover the epidemiology, diagnosis, management, and outcomes for patients with ischemic colitis. Regarding epidemiology, it's important to understand that ischemic colitis is gonna be far more common than small mal mesenteric ischemia. And I'll spend much of this talk comparing and contrasting these two distinct disease processes. Ischemic colitis may be caused by non-occlusive ischemia, arterial embolism, arterial thrombosis, or venous thrombosis. However, the vast majority of cases, up to 95%, are from a non-occlusive cause. Again, in contrast to small bowel mesenteric ischemia, the blood supply to the colon comes from the superior mesenteric artery giving off the right colic and middle colic arteries, the inferior mesenteric artery giving off the left colic and superior rectal arteries, and the internal iliac artery giving off the middle rectal and inferior rectal arteries. Um, as this is a, a blood supply comes from three distinct areas, there are also watershed areas, Griffith's point between the SMA and the IMA, and Sudex point between the IMA and the internal iliac supply. And these are the most commonly affected areas in patients with ischemic colitis. The typical patient will be older, 95% more than 60 years old, more common in women than men, may have a hypercoagulable disorder coming in the door. And there are some risk factors that, that are important to keep in mind for patients with ischemic colitis. Acute myocardial infarction and or congestive heart failure, cardiopulmonary bypass, um, end-stage renal disease and dialysis, an aortic intervention for AAA or aortic iliac disease, either open or stenting, uh, drug use, specifically cocaine and amphetamines, and then overexertion or uh, vigorous exercise. All, what these all causes or underlying risk factors have in common is a low flow state uh, to the left colon. The diagnosis is broken down by clinical presentation, labs, x-rays, and the gold standard diagnostic tests of endoscopy. Presentation uh, is typically crampy abdominal pain and tenderness over the left side of the abdomen, an urgency to defecate and rectal bleeding or, or bloody diarrhea. However, patients that are in the ICU and intubated may not be able to uh, communicate, abdominal pain may not manifest tenderness or urgency to defecate, and rectal bleeding or a bloody abdomen may be the only tip we have um, that we have ischemic colitis. Labs are nonspecific, but as you'll see in a few minutes, they may help you determine the severity of disease. Uh, radiography may be useful. Um, plain films are likely to be normal, but may show um, free uh, uh, intraperitoneal air in the case of perforation or pneumatosis intestinalis in more uh, advanced cases. CT scan um, is probably the most common diagnostic test, uh, imaging test, and most commonly shows uh, colonic thickening of the left colon, but may be normal, show some fat stranding, free fluid, perforation in advanced cases, um, and again, may show you an underlying cause, arterial venous cause, or an alternative diagnosis like diverticulitis. Um, <clears throat> like I said, endoscopy is the gold standard for diagnosis. This can be done rigid or flexible. Um, insufflation should be minimal. And then findings may be mild, like mucosal erythema, uh, edema, but maybe more severe like this case with necrosis of the mucosa or ulceration. Biopsy should be taken at the time of endoscopy and also may show you an alternative diagnosis as well. So the differential diagnosis, really it's most importantly to distinguish um, uh, ischemic colitis from small, small bowel mesenteric ischemia. Small bowel mesenteric ischemia, the age varies quite a bit where ischemic colitis, um, almost all these patients are older. Small bowel mesenteric ischemia will have an acute precipitating cause uh, such as SMA thrombosis, SMA uh, embolus or mesenteric venous thrombosis whereas ischemic colitis is usually a non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia, I mean, uh, ischemia, and uh, there's no precipitating cause that's obvious. Patients with small bowel mesenteric ischemia are gonna look ill, um, be quite sick, where ischemic colitis um, will likely not be ill um, and not be critically um, uh, ill in the ICU. Pain with small bowel mesenteric ischemia is usually severe and not so tender, so pain out of proportion to exam. Whereas ischemic colitis are going to have mild abdominal pain and have pretty focal tenderness in the left side of the abdomen. Bleeding is uncommon until very late in small bowel mesenteric ischemia, whereas ischemic colitis, rectal bleeding or bloody bowel movements are the most common presenting, uh, um, the most common presentation. Diagnostic chest of choice in small bowel mesenteric ischemia is angiography, whether that's CTA, MRA, or conventional angio. 
where ischemic colitis, um, as I mentioned before, endoscopy is the mainstay of diagnosis. Management. Uh, first of all, we need to break the disease down into mild, moderate, and severe. The Marin College of Gastroenterology has identified some risk factors that can stratify these patients into mild, moderate, severe disease. These include uh, male gender, uh, hemodynamic instability, pain without bleeding, um, uh, abnormal labs, including BUN, hemoglobin, LDH, sodium, and white count, and the mucosal ulcerations. So a mild um, uh, case of ischemic colitis has essentially no risk factors. So this is going to be a female patient who's hemodynamically stable with some um, uh, pain with rectal bleeding um, and uh, normal labs, essentially. So going to be uh, fairly uncommon. Moderate disease is going to be one to three of the risk factors I mentioned previously. And then severe disease is going to have greater than three risk factors or other findings such as diffuse peritonitis, pneumatosis, gangrene, seen on endoscopy. And if the presentation is not left-sided, so right-sided ischemic colitis makes this a severe case. So the management is now broken down by mild, moderate, and severe disease as well. Mild case, cases, merely supportive, IV hydration, pain control. For moderate cases, you'll need to add antibiotics, so broad-spectrum antibiotics covering enteric bacteria. And finally, severe, which is about 20% of the time, may require surgical management. So surgical management, there's a few options. This can be done laparoscopic or open, and often these cases start with a uh, diagnostic laparoscopy to confirm the diagnosis or identify full thickness ischemia. Uh, obviously, if a segment of bowel is, uh, is ischemic or necrotic, it needs to be resected. The question of diversion has not really been answered in ischemic colitis, as this is a fairly uncommon presentation. However, you can probably take extrapolation from either diverticulitis or traumatic colon resections and do a resection with primary anastomosis uh, with or without a proximal diverting loop ileostomy. Second look, if you have a very clear area of demarcation and you can resect that and you're comfortable with the margins, you don't need to do a second look. Uh, if there's any question about um, ongoing ischemia and the remaining bowel, you may want to come back for a second look in a planned time uh, in, um, in 12 to 24 hours. And like I said before, there's really limited data driving this, and you need to make an individualized decision for the patient in front of you. Outcomes, most of these cases are self-limited. There is a mortality of 5 to 50%. This obviously goes up significantly the more severe the presentation. Patients may develop a chronic ischemic colitis with recurrent bouts and then stricture uh, can develop in an area uh, of ischemic colitis. So in conclusion, the epidemiology, um, ischemic colitis is gonna be uh, usually in older patients, much more common than small bowel mesenteric ischemia. Um, the diagnosis is made on history and physical with abdominal pain and uh, bloody bowel movements. And the, uh, the, really the gold standard for uh, diagnosis is endoscopy, either flexible or, or, or rigid um, uh, sigmoidoscopy. Uh, management uh, in mild cases is supportive, moderate cases, antibiotics, and more severe cases, surgical management. And the outcomes are really dependent on the presentation and severity of disease. Once again, I'd like to thank the Ameri American College of Surgeons for allowing me to present at this year's virtual clinical congress. Thank you.